Well, then you're ready, Glenn. Lead singer, birthday song. Come on. No. One, two, and one, two. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> so we're not there. Okay. Maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> maybe next year. Welcome to episode 52 of the Number One Crude Mistakes podcast with Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient, and Hovar from Behind the Mistakes. It's our birthday! Woohoo! <laughs> Happy birthday, guys! <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a license for those? <laughs> no, they smell great, don't they, party poppers? Oh, uh, yeah, I can smell them all the way over here. <laughs> I wish Can I you? could. <laughs> Happy birthday, guys. Yeah, happy birthday to us. Happy birthday. Who would have you know, thought I, it? I, yeah, Not me. Would have <laughs> I remember someone saying early that, well, most podcasts die after episode eight. So, yeah, we crushed that. And I thought about it um, late. I mean, last today, actually, it's episode 52. But <laughs> we started the, the half pint. Like six episode in, and I've I've realized something that the the half pints are just as long as the main episode. Uh, so basically, we are now two times fifty minus five or six or that. So, so we are getting close 60. to a hundred episodes in a year. That's, I mean, that's, that's uh, if that's not worth a cake, then I don't know what is. <laughs> well, cake. <that> <laughs> It depends on how, how we count the episodes and that sort of thing. But yeah, we got. So I'm suggesting next year we celebrate in Amsterdam with a different kind of cake. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. That would mean that we have to leave our the comfort of our homes. I'm not seeing that happening. Oh, we do it for maker meetups though, don't we? True, true. Yeah. Are there any maker meetups in Netherlands? Well, if we all go there, then it's a make a meet meetup, isn't it? I like the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> also true. Also true. <laughs> Every day is a make a meet. <laughs> is a is a funeral a, a meet your make a uh, meet up? <laughs> you know what? It is. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad and sad. I thought we should stay away from death. Oh yeah, sorry. It's it's funny that you're <laughs> saying that. I, I know nobody died. Well, yes, James Earl Jones actually died. That was he sad. Did. Yeah. Um, but on that note, of course, meet your maker and maker. That's a that's a fun wordplay in the maker community. But it's the same in Norwegian because skaper and skaper is the meet your maker as in the great maker above or below whatever you believe in. Um, or if you use epoxy or not. Uh, but um, <laughs> I actually, uh, we, we met uh, the parents of someone in um, our daughter's school for the first time. We went there for dinner. And I, I mean, I don't know how I segued into it, but uh, I mentioned that I do a podcast on Tuesdays so we couldn't attend something. And like, all right, what, what do you do? Oh, it's a maker podcast. And she's like, Became dead silent. Then you, you mean like a religious podcast? <laughs> no, 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 not that kind of maker. But I mean, the, they they had no idea what the maker community is or what a maker. So they instantly went to, oh, it's a religious thing, <laughs> and we kind of misjudged you. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> so um, no, I never considered that that people could take the maker community to mean. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. You you I mean, if I were religious, see what you get. <laughs> but I mean, if we were uh, religious men, then of course we would make the name of the podcast "Meet Your Maker" or the Three Wise Men. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> In quotation marks, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. It's the fault. I mean, it's the... I mean, it's it's obvious who is gold, but <laughs> <laughs> it's the follow-up questions when you tell somebody you're a maker, isn't it? And you explain it. Oh, I make stuff. What do you make? All kinds of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, luckily, there... <laughs> <laughs> luckily, there were no follow-up questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> 
do you make? Uh, giant padlocks. <laughs> Uh, why? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you really need to have the the hiss pitch of like, you're saying the the elevator pitch pitch is called. I mean, like mixed uh, languages there. Uh, elevator pitch of fifteen seconds explaining what you do. Uh, yeah, because but, that needs to be rehearsed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, but that Otherwise, also, you're stumbling love, for five minutes. I've had a a blast a couple of days because. Some videos generate good comments, and of course, the the padlock video over at TikTok is just a person like, "Why?" <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> "Why not?" I mean, it's ob isn't it obvious? But you love and your then, wife. <laughs> yeah, and then one of my regular commenters obviously have a, a sore spot for like, uh, "Oh, these." Love locks are uh, an incredible bad idea, and it's a, a structural danger to a bridge, and the city council is going to remove it. And like, yep, <laughs> <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> it's like uh, I saw that comment and just went, really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw it, and it's like, but, but the, that's a that's a nice guy. Uh, so uh, I'm not gonna like. Uh, write a, a two letter no two page uh, comment answer but uh, yeah just call him out on the podcast instead yeah <laughs> much easier yeah. <laughs> so. you, you really struck a home run there both with the video and the project i think because it came out absolutely beautiful and the video was great as well yeah you know i i thought of the video where um that's that's when I realized that Nerdforge is uh, almost my next door neighbor because uh, they filmed a video where she just dressed up and went out in public and recorded herself. And that is in the same city where I put up the padlock. And I think I get graffiti artists now. I mean, people ask them, why don't you just get a canvas and do it in your home and like, there is something about sneaking out, setting up, and then let like, just all right. There is no people around. All right, go 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 go, and you and you record, and you have to check the video clip. <laughs> oh no, oh no, I need to retake it. God damn, there's a family coming. All right, pretend you're filming the river and taking pictures of the bridge because that's <laughs> normal. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course it took longer than the my lunch time. So um, just at the end, you say, okay, I, I know what I need to film now, but. I also need to go. Fuck it, I'll I'll just film, even if people are coming. So you get over that fear, uh, and then of course I got a parking ticket, and then I realized, well, I can just stay here forever now because you're not getting another parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was bloody fun filming that the last part actually, and then uh, cutting everything down to match in between there. So I think I did a good job. Yeah, no, it's great, great video. Really, really yeah. liked it. How much footage did you start with? Four hours, or what was it? <laughs> I started with three hours. Yeah. The build montage footage, and then I, I slapped the intro and the outro on it, and I I found like this uh, circus tune themed music that I would think that that would be nice for a comedic uh, build montage, and that was I think it was two minutes or something. So I just hacked everything down to fit two minutes. And that was a really easy botch job, actually. So yeah, I'm pleased with that. So um, I think it some, really great. in a couple of days, I'll, I'll launch the, the, the full build video. It's not going to be three hours, though, but it's going to be, I think it's 30 minutes. So it's not that bad, but. Are you releasing that for everybody, or is it just a patron? Uh, video? Uh, well. At first, I'm gonna. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna release it for everyone. But at first, I'm gonna have to make Arne pay for it, so he can learn how to build a padlock. And then, once he has paid for it, so then I can re release it to everyone else. <laughs> He's not gonna build a bigger padlock than you. I'm. Oh, I would. Re <laughs> I would really like if this became like an internal uh, maker pissing contest, who could make the largest, yeah. because. I mean, someone is bound to just like go big and then just really go with it. And that would be really brilliant. And then, of course, when I Googled, there are a few large padlocks out there, but I think the, the Guinness World of Record is still from back in 
2003 and I mean, it's larger than mine, but not by too much. So need to read up on the rules though, because does it need to have a functioning lock? I'm guessing yes. So you have to have that, but it don't need to be anything advanced. And then building one that's bigger than the current world record. I mean, if, if three makers take a weekend and a case of beer, you could knock that out of the park. And then, of course, with a little bit more uh, elbow grease, we could really <laughs> set the record straight. So that, it would be fun if someone here picked up the torch and ran with it. It's, that sh it's the uh, shack block bit. Is that what he call it? Is it called? The uh, metal bit and the, the ring. Yeah. It's that, it's that that's the tricky part, isn't it? Getting something yeah. bigger in that size. Yeah, I got to lucky, make, of that's course. That's really tricky. But then I... I, I know people I can ask at least because I used to work in the shipbuilding industry and uh, I mean, pipe bending is uh, an everyday occurrence. So uh, it's, it's, it's a couple of emails asking uh, how large uh, pipe diameters and uh, <laughs> cross sections can you actually bend or do you know anyone with a, a, with a bigger pipe bender than you have? And uh, I think you could... Uh, <laughs> pull some uh, really good uh, steel bars. I think Ola Skitterin's the man to, to really make a giant one and pull it off. He, yeah. he is really, really talented with the metal. So the question yeah. is, how do we trick him into uh, thinking that this is what he wants? <laughs> <laughs> is is he like m many of us that is just uh, I'm not sure you can pull that off mate <laughs> that's his <is> enough <laughs> like, I'm going to show you <laughs> might where I'll be yeah. <laughs> so getting back to the birthday celebrations one year on yeah. any highlights for you guys for the last year other than meeting me obviously <laughs> yeah obviously that <laughs> yeah well uh Highlight. I mean, meeting you guys, of course, but I don't think we have a very clear origin story. Um, but we might get back to that. Uh, but after that, highlights, yes, of course. Meeting up at Scarlet Festival. And I, I did listen back to a few episodes. And the first ones were, of course, we have progress, but I mean, they weren't shit. Uh, and of course, you can. Uh, I mean, at least I can tell the difference that, um, of course, you have three blokes in the beginning who doesn't really know each other. So, of course, the it's a lot less cock and balls and it's more PG-13 <laughs> until uh, you realize yeah. uh, <laughs> where do you have the other two? <laughs> And then it went overboard from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't can't think of any memorable moments from the podcast itself, but but actually having realizing that people are listening—that's the thing. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I mean, I, I go back to the Scarper Festival of last year, but I went there more as thinking I I, I could promote the podcast, but. Every person I tried to promote it to said, but yeah, I'm already a listener. <laughs> but yeah, that felt rather weird. <laughs> that was a surprise to me when you reported back from that, actually. And then again, at, at Maker Central this year, a few people stopping you saying, are you, are you Glenn from the board? What? <laughs> I've heard of that. <laughs> yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, and uh, the WhatsApp group that we started, that we should promote uh, a little more. That's why I should have a WhatsApp group connected to the... <laughs> The podcast where you can chat with uh, other uh, listeners and us and everything, and that people like actually want to be in that next yeah. year. That's yeah. actually turned out to be a really nice little group. I'm really enjoying that. It's nice, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's a good Enjoy combination it. of banter and uh, actually people pitching ideas and uh, asking technical questions on how to solve this. Has anyone not fucked up at this earlier? Please let me know. <laughs> yeah, it's a healthy combination. We had a new member this week. We might as well shout him out since so you brought it up. Yeah. We had uh, Michael from Hulu Shed join us this week. Nice to have you aboard. Welcome, aboard. America. <laughs> yeah, America. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is that a thing? Every time you get a new one, it's like the stereotypical uh, introduction from that country or region. I'm on board with that. Yeah. I'm fine with it. <laughs> I think um, one of the highlights from the episodes for me has been some of the introductions that have gone on. So Tim's was obviously a really standout introduction. That was fantastic. But my favourite one, I think it was about episode four, was when Hovar accused me of being Banksy. That's still up there. It's my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, so hilarious. Sort of unexpected. Yeah, all the guest episodes are good with there. Especially yeah. the, inter- the different introductions are, yeah. Yeah, and that yeah. was a complete accident, wasn't it? Because it was yeah. um, Mellow Labs that started that. He just decided to do one, didn't he? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And then that became canon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. And I'm, again, amazed by, okay, people listen, people join the group, and then people actually, like, twist their heads and, like, work on, all right, I need I need to do a, a good intro because I, I can't be remembered <laughs> as the one who just had a shit intro. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> the bar is really high. So before we kick off the episode, it's like, oh, I've been thinking about this intro for days, guys. So it's that, like, once you get that out of the way, it's like, all right, now we can loosen up, the shoulders come down, and <laughs> just start chatting. <laughs> You just put some pressure on next week's guest that I have on. Don't be afraid, but the bar is high. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. Just do it better than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's the thing, though. I mean, everybody's doing their take on it, so it, you, it's well, it's not something you can compare apples to apples. It's uh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm not sure I could have an intro as great as our guests have. I can't remember we had one either. So No, no, definitely not. I've not even managed a full intro for the last two episodes I've done. <laughs> you just end up giggling like a schoolgirl <laughs> or a schoolboy. <laughs> um, either way, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. right. It's good that at least we are laughing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Michelle listened to uh, last week's and said, oh, is this what's going on here? Why? What caused this hysterics to happen here? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't answer if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, well, we might as well uh, say also that uh, as a celebration for our first birthday, we are trying to uh, record a video for this uh, this episode as well. So if ev- all goes well, you should be able to see us talking uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, not any promises, yeah. and technology yeah. has let us down before. So, and if yeah. this doesn't so... if this doesn't work, you can expect a very grumpy audio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because then this is not the first recording we have done. <laughs> oh, we might and, not go that far, but yeah. No. And as a bonus, I mean, it, it's not only the 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 creaky noises of uh, Glenn's chair, but it's now the. ASMR eating sounds from the rest of us eating cake. <laughs> and then, of course, forgetting we're on video. So the beard is full of breadcrumbs <laughs> and frosting. <laughs> and, yeah. Trying not to pick our noses too much. Yeah. So what's going on with the, the facial hair and the head hair here, Havar? You promised, uh, you promised a visit to the barbershop, didn't you? Yeah, I did, but I haven't had time since I finished the video. And to be fair... It's it's a bit sad because uh, it's a long time since I've had, for me, this is long hair, um, if you exclude the part at the top, which kind of excludes itself because it's a <laughs> desert wasteland. But, uh, so yeah, it's a crazy professor slash monk look. Um, I have, oh. I've, I've, of course, had fun with it. So I had the, the biggest comb over ever and just went out in the living room and my wife like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> and just gave me the marching order back to like, um, <laughs> But yeah, but I, I realized I, it's, it's nice, especially at work, to have hair to pull. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but it, it will be shortened down. And of course, I will try different variations of... Um, of course, I need to be a monk, uh, not for an entire day, but for an hour, and then try different variations. And of course, I'm going to let the kids have a go. So it's like, here's a hair trimmer. <laughs> have at it. 
Oh yeah, maybe that's for uh, this weekend. You gonna film it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Make, mo- mo- I'll make a good reel. <laughs> most for the kids, yeah. And me. <laughs> <laughs> and you. My <laughs> <Right>, kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what have you been up to, Maker Wise then, KJ? Uh, not much Maker Wise since uh, I was uh, away on a company trip uh, a couple of days oh, last yeah. week. Um so the only thing I actually got done, more or less, was uh, editing video, which I did uh, on the train there with uh, with some colleagues around me, uh, just <laughs> just casually. Uh, some people were working and some people were watching a movie. I was editing a movie instead. So did anybody I, notice? It took a while, and then someone, "What are you doing?" But yeah, I'm making a YouTube video. Of what? <laughs> yeah, well, this is uh, this is a power knife I made, a knife that lights up. It does what? <laughs> and then I didn't get any more questions after that. Strangely enough, <laughs> I'm not sure if that is a good thing or a bad thing. But, Me neither. Um... <laughs> I'm a bit afraid of going into the office, actually. <laughs> but then again, I saw a video of Call Me Maybe. He's making like a, a maker documentary series, and he also filmed himself like video editing on an airplane and that just got me thinking and when you said now that you're sitting on a train i like you freak of a man i mean how can you do anything on one screen let alone <laughs> a small laptop screen i mean i i can't do anything unless i have two screens because i need stuff distributed over if i have to sit and use tabs and switch between and that just drives me crazy yeah, I'm used to using the laptop for the last year or so, I think, because then I can do it in the living room while I'm watching the kids and hanging out with the family and not just disappearing down to my office and not be seen for a couple of hours. That's so then the, the, fa- good... the family is more okay with that. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. But yeah, a bigger screen would be nice. I'm not yeah. de- denying that. You're used to multiple screens more than the rest of us. How many screens have you got home? Is it three or? I have, uh, well, that depends on what how you count it. Three <laughs> to five. It's very easy. You count <laughs> one, <laughs> two, three, four, five. It's yeah. it's, it's basic yeah. math. That's one screen. That's another screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, 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 it's mostly three at the most connected to the same computer. Right. So yeah, I have five five screens. There are three computers. And there's one uh, uh, tablet. So, so yeah, it, it, actually, that's one more screen that I don't use, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> I love that the first time I, I saw it, and I don't remember where, but someone had several screens, and they were connected to two separate computers, but you could drag the mouse cursor from one screen to another, and it seamlessly switched between two computers. And I was like, holy! So, yeah, but no. One computer for me, me. but several screens is a a a must. And I have been using now. I have my laptop, of course, on a docking station. So if I flip that open, I have three screens, and I realize I can't do this because if I use three screens for more than two hours, I'm hooked. Then I can't go back again. So it's like uh, like cocaine, I think. (laughs) Have you tried those mega wide screen? Just a single screen that pretends to be three screens. That's, no. Uh, the rage at the moment. I hate them. And <laughs> thank you, because that's what I think as well. I mean, I like that. Of course, I when I buy screens, I do buy those with the, the least amount of frame around. But I do like the separation. Also mentally that you have two different yeah. screens. You can send output to that screen or not. I mean, if you're using... Uh, uh, well, we call it always B, so it is always B. <laughs> and then if you just have one screen, then you just have to move things around on one surface. And yeah, no, that's uh, no, don't like it. But then again, never tried it, so it's very easy to hate it as well. <laughs> when I got my new computer, I said to Michelle, I want to, I want two screens. Why do you want two screens? Well, KJ and I've always got two screens. <laughs> 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 just be handy, won't it? She said, you don't need two screens. So how many screens have you got at work? Two. Well, I want two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you have two yourself, then, then you, you can't really argue otherwise. But yeah. 
Michelle, give the man a scream. Come on, I've, if that's I've what he it. asks I've for. I've got that. it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't deny him his pleasures. <laughs> coming home from Scarpet Festival and then what do you have in your bag? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> and it's an old laptop computer screen. <laughs> like... I was thinking CNC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, just, uh, I was thinking it... Michelle has stolen your both, both your screens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now she has four. <laughs> no, if she has two screens at work, she's like me. She doesn't have a computer at home. <laughs> I don't do gardening at home. She doesn't have a computer at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's uh, someone made a reel about it. That's how you tell an old generation apart from the newer generation. It's like, all right, if you need to pay bills or buy airplane tickets, or if you have to do like a, a semi major purchase, oh, I need to go to my computer. I mean, kids today, they will happily buy a house on their phone. I mean, uh, fix yeah. everything with the bank. No, uh, I need to. All right. If I'm going to the bank, then uh, all right. It's the computer. Uh, and if I'm going to pay a bill over uh, five dollars, all right, I go to the online bank. And if there is something, all right, I, I should print this. That being said, <laughs> I don't have a printer at home anymore, but I do print stuff at my office for bringing home. <laughs> It's funny, I'm not quite sure how to use our printer. There is a printer here, but uh, so I generally laser stuff on what I've opted printing out. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's called a laser printer, and I mean, you can you just exactly. put a sheet of paper through it, yeah. Those stacks get thick quite fast if you're using plywood as yeah. sheets. <laughs> it's but putting I mean, the holes get... in for the binder. <laughs> Uh, that would be so nice. You're buying a house and coming with a contract. And <laughs> yeah. just, Flintstone style. <laughs> exactly. I mean, then again, all, all receipts and everything when you're at restaurants and so on, that's, that's heat sensitive paper. So it's it's basically a tiny laser that's uh, burning, uh, heating up the paper. Because if you leave them out in the sun for too long, they become entirely black. So, yeah. I mean, you could probably buy that paper in A4 sizes and then you can use your laser as a printer. I, I, I did. Like I did see a three in one that you now have. It was a laser, and I think it was a CNC, and you could also put in like the uh, stencil uh, cutter head or something. So, uh, yeah, maybe I was just thinking add a fourth. Would, it would be better that, because, as you said, the receipts lose their uh, lose the text after a while and just have them on the on the laser on a slate of stone instead I mean, that's not going away anywhere soon but yeah, yeah. I've had, this is under warranty i have it here and... <laughs> written in stone but that's there is a few regrets i have when it comes to it equipment and uh, my first computer i i wish we never botched or sold or whatever we did that that would be a cool thing to have today because uh, trying to buy one is crazy expensive. But I also remember, since my father started a, a computer company, he also uh, set up various equipment for companies. And one of those things were a early, like a plotter making technical drawings. And hmm. that looked like a laser today. It had a gantry system. And at the side, it had four pencils in four different colors and it actually went over and picked up the red one and then he drew oh, the wow. and it cost like i think it's cost like four or five thousand dollars in the 90s so it was crazy expensive but of course uh, setting it up for them i also set it up with their computer before we drove it out so we played around with it and made drawings of everything and if i could get my hands of one of those today I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah, just the fact that it goes and pick up. I mean, I I could I could chuck a, a pencil in my CNC and have it to draw on a piece of paper, but I mean, this was built custom for that purpose, and it looked awesome. So if I could get that one, but I'm guessing that's so old, and getting a novelty now so is probably just as expensive as it was new because they yeah. are not uh, very much around anymore. I have colleagues that uh, used those and who. When we talked about drawing in CAD, and I said, "Yeah, you have to 
to draw the lines in the correct order so it doesn't go and pick up the red pen and draw one line and go back and pick up the red pen and draw another line and go and <laughs> you have to think how you draw the make the drawing so the it doesn't take time because it's switching between the pens yep. yeah it's better now with the modern plotters <laughs> but they are damn cool i really want to tape a felt tip pen to my laser now and do some drawing with it i'll tape all the felt tip pens to it <laughs> <laughs> do it it's content and then you can yeah, uh, I, I remember the the plastic stencil you got as a kid where you you put your finger in the center and then you put the pen in and you just, and it made like all these intricate uh, oh, patterns. Spirograph. Yeah, spirograph, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could probably set your uh, laser uh, up to do uh, all kinds of patterns and you just uh, duct tape a <laughs> yeah, felt pen to it then. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could use that for forgery because some people put their signature online and oh, sign okay. stuff. And then if you have a pen actually making it, it would look more convincing than if you just Ooh. printed it stuff 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 made here did that it tried to uh hmm. how to best have technology forge a signature and then he sent it off to a like a fbi a handwriting specialist to like uh which one of these are made by a machine <laughs> so that's a really good video <laughs> did they figure it out the fbi um oof, i mean it, it's hard when you're trying to uh, run things by these experts because they, they really don't want to admit failure. I don't remember the results there, but right. I think they realized that a few of them were decent enough that they might be uh, tricked. Yeah. Well, here's an experiment then. You send me your checkbooks and your signatures and <laughs> yeah. well, see how it goes. <laughs> so making wise, how's your week been? Me? Yeah, you. Yeah, me. <laughs> Not done much making this week, but um, I did get the video out last week for the uh, wooden lamp on the lathe. Yeah, yeah. Yes, quite pleased with yeah, quite it's pleased with how the lamp came out. Really pleased with that. Um, a little bit pleased with how the video performed as well. <laughs> <laughs> Again, though, the company uh, the accompanying shorts did really well with it, so uh, pleased with those. But yeah, no. Quite happy with the, the lamp. I can't remember seeing anyone doing that kind of assem turning assembly thing, of turning different parts and no. assembling in that way. No, that 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 style lamp's not on uh, YouTube. I checked after I released it as well. <laughs> Lots of lamp bases turned on the thing with a you know a, a regular shade just stuck on top, but uh, not that yeah. style. So yeah, I was quite pleased with that. But one one thing is the lamp, which is gorgeous, and and the video is really good. But what you also should be proud of is that your project has sparked ideas for other projects. And that is a really <laughs> good feeling when you're a maker, yeah. when you make something and like, ooh, I saw that and I want to try to make this. Because then you have inspired someone. And of course, I I'm going to make a huge ass pipe. That that's just <laughs> happening down the line. <laughs> but we also was like fooling around with that... Uh, I'm really impressed when you drill that that long narrow hole in yeah, in, in the foot or the neck of the lamp, yeah. yeah. And that knowing that that is actually doable at that scale, that opened up a lot. And we thought maybe you could maybe you could make a wooden gun. No, <laughs> and it's turned out someone is actually sitting and like, I could do that. I really want yeah. to do that. So we are just now like. <laughs> Yeah, you should do that. Or yeah, maybe you do uh, we're not sure you can pull that off. I mean, we're trying. <laughs> we're trying all angles here be, because we need to see a, a, a wooden firearm. But I'm guessing yeah. it might have been done before. But still, I would like to see it. I think if anybody can do it, Vern makes can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got the skills. I'm sure he has. I've seen some of his YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about you, Hor? Have we got anything done? Other than, well, I um, of course I got I got the padlock out, which is a nice thing to uh, cross off the list. And then of course um, I instantly went into uh, maintenance on uh, my what's what's it called brush cutter, grass cutter. Yeah. <laughs> um, Did I inspire had... you to do that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had. Uh, a very nice weekend. Um, 
the kid's uh, grandfather and aunt uh, asked them if they wanted to sleep over from Friday to Saturday. And of course, um, we had a lovely dinner. Uh, we went out and spotted the, the, the padlock out in the wild. So I got a selfie of me and the wife and the padlock. Um, and of course, we went home, uh, had wine, uh, puzzled puzzles, and just really had a very nice Friday uh, talking to each other without being interrupted, which is nice. And then on Saturday, when we went to get the kids, they like, we're not ready to go. I mean, grandfather, and we're going bathing, and then we're going for a boat trip. And, and then they just said, all right, they, they can sleep over for another night. I, oh, my God. All right. Let's go for lunch. So we went and lunch and we bought some few things and then we went home and did gardening. And let me tell you, hats off to you, Glenn. Um, <laughs> it's not often I do a full day of gardening. And then, uh, of course, uh, when I do gardening, I'm, I'm wielding uh, some power tool. Uh, and... Some would say that's the same for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, I, I still almost can feel that tingling sensation in my arms. I spent my entire... Um, Saturday doing gardening work and then on Sunday I tried to do the quiet uh, collecting everything and putting it into a trailer but my brush cutter is acting up on me so I thought well I can take a if I open this screw I can have a look and then <laughs> one screw leads to another so now it's fully dismantled um, I also ended up uh, dissecting the plug lead um, because I, I couldn't get a spark so I thought that was broken uh, what I realized in hindsight is that I might not have grounded the spark plug good enough <laughs> when I tested the sparks out. I'm not sure if the plug lead was broken in the first place, but it is now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and of course, getting that spare part, that's half the price of a new brush cutter. But I did find a part that matches, I think, on AliExpress. So in a couple of weeks, I might have a spare part. But yeah, my uh, workshop now looks like... Um, well, a small machine uh, <laughs> workshop. <laughs> so that's uh, how far I came. Uh, I'm planning on continuing on the table, but uh, it's. I'm not looking forward to uh, to gathering all the parts together just to stow them away to bring them out again in two weeks. So it, it would have been if I had the table space, I would just leave it for two weeks until the parts arrive, and then I just put it together. But uh, yeah, I can't sit for two weeks and not use my workshop. So, uh, yeah, I had the I had the same deal at the weekend. I did some um, of my work tool maintenance. Got a new set of blades on one of the hedge trimmers, a new carburetor and spark plug in another, and then a new carb and spark plug in the grass trimmer as well. So, so I find when the the machines aren't running properly, it's nearly always the fuel that's the problem. Yeah, never the never the electrics. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that's that's the thing though they are very simple but they are nicely tuned machines and I hate these small engines because I've taken everything apart and I can't see anything obvious and everything when I test it separately they, they, they seem to work and then when you put it back together no the goddamn thing won't start or it won't yeah. run properly and I watched every YouTube video but on this particular one, there is no YouTube video specifically for that one. So you just have to look at something else and try to, I mean, it's probably the same, but yeah. So that's, I mean, it's, the brand is Stiga. So, so it's not a unknown brand, brand, but uh, but it's not like steel, which is intended for the professional market where they have service kits and so on. So you can get parts to the Stiga one, but it's not nicely bundled or thought about the professional users that actually do maintenance. So they are selling these to people who use them until they fail and then they buy new ones because yeah. that's their, so getting the parts are expensive and that is for weirdos like myself that, I mean, <laughs> I can't throw away an engine that's theoretically perfectly fine. So, I mean, I could get a new one, but I would still be irritated about that engine that's, but it just needs a part to be running again. And then I could build a project out of it. So it's like uh, with that mentality, I can never get myself to just toss it out and get a new one. Yeah, most of my stuff that I run is still, um, you know, because it's just bloody good machinery. But what I found is that 
you can get the aftermarket service kits on Amazon delivered next day here. And no. a, a kit for the hedge trimmer, for instance, with a carburetor in it, a spark plug, some spare priming bubbles, some plastic tubing, 12 quid delivered the next day. You just can't go wrong. And, you know, you, you slap it on, it takes 10, 15 minutes and everything's working again. It's just, you can't beat it really. No. Almost worth buying still for, <laughs> for that alone. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. And especially for me, I, I mean, you get the hours in, but I think if I if I buy one, I, I could probably use it for the rest of my life, given the hours I put on it. It would probably just break because yeah. the the tubes will uh, break by time and UV light and so on. But yeah, so maybe it would make sense if I, if I can't get this running, I, I would probably switch bra brand to have something that's more easily serviceable because yeah, it's, it's a higher price buying it, but I don't want to buy a new one after four years because I think this one is three or four years old and it's ran for yeah. like uh, three hours every summer. So it's not that it's oh, that's not good, is it? Oh, mm -hmm. I'd recommend Makita as well for the petrol machinery. They do some cracking stuff. Do they or the battery petrol? ones. <laughs> no, not, not battery. That'd be, no. be ridiculous. Nobody wants battery stuff for the garden. It's awesome. <laughs> then you don't have any problems with uh, the maintenance <laughs> of, the, of the motors. It just works. I was cutting a massive hedge last week, and I thought about you with the battery thing. I'm thinking, I would not have got around this in that time um, with just one battery. <laughs> no, but then you have more batteries. <laughs> top it up with fuel, off you go again. Yeah, but yeah. It's no smell, yeah. it doesn't your, make any sound barely. Your electric stuff's not cutting as quickly as a two stroke, no way. Well, that depends on how much force you're putting. And I mean, I, I don't have the, the highest end, the, the toughest machines either, mm. uh, because those are so expensive and I don't like to pay too much. Um, that's fair enough. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but that's the thing, though. I mean, if you. I mean, even the 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 cheapest uh, garden store variant, the petrol one, will easily outperform a, a semi decent battery one, and the battery one is going to be five, six, seven plus times the price at at least here. And I mean, then I then I can toss out my. Uh, petrol one once every fourth year and I still after 10 years haven't spent just as much money and of course I I must admit I don't treat them very well I have this uh, I, I use the the nylon brush cutter for the, the nicer part of the garden but for the rest of one I put on the three bladed uh, metal thing and I sharpen the hell out of it with an angle grinder and then I cut trees, bushes, uh, and if it digs into the ground, no worries. I just give it more throttle, and there's rocks flying everywhere, and I just, just uh, and I'm happy. I have my headphones on, listening to podcasts, and like, and make sure, like, they... just like a proper gardener, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, I felt like I was channeling my inner gland there the entire Saturday. I was really enjoying it. You just have to make sure that the kids are inside. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, look we... around and they're just <laughs> lying there knocked out by a stone. <laughs> We've got a uh, pine tree in our back garden. And when you uh, mow the back, back lawn, it flings pine cones everywhere. <laughs> and it used to be, we used to have Lily hiding behind a chair and Michelle hiding just inside with a head. It's pew, pew, pine cones going everywhere. <laughs> but... You asked me when I got my new drill if I if I had one in each hand and went like pew 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 like in in the workshop and no comment. But when I saw your uh, picture, like uh, I'm also doing servicing, you had two hedge trimmers there, identical. I mean, yeah. have you at some point thought I've seen Edward scissor hand? Let's try this and go like <laughs> just wielding one in each hand. <laughs> I've not tried it. I will do though, just for the uh, just for content. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I'm going. I'm probably going to chop something off. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not something of your own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, going back to the uh, weekend as well was what I did. 
also tidied up the back end of the workshop, the uh, storage area where I keep my other hobbies and uh, tools, and um, sent you a picture, and you both denied knowledge of ever knowing them. Yeah, I mean, you've been sitting here like, oh, no, it's so sad, small workshop club. Oh, no, no. And it turns out you have a bloody cathedral back there. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we've seen any pictures of it, have we? I don't think I've ever sent you a picture. But, oh. you know, going back to episode three, I told you all about it then. Do you mean that we should remember what you say? <laughs> yeah. I remember everything you two guys say. Yeah, well, You're but right. I mean, when you brought <laughs> when you brought it up, yeah, you did mention you had you had a small cupboard in the back or something where you put your fishing <laughs> rods or whatnot. But yeah, when yeah. you sent that picture, I mean, uh, we've all seen that warehouse in the Indiana Jones movie where they hide <laughs> the ark. I mean, that's yeah. that's as Glenn place. That's in his back garden. <laughs> So when are you building an, another shed for those stuff so you can expand the workshop? For me, um, the only expansion I can possibly do now is upwards. Or down. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Next, Colin first. Yeah, that, that's been I, I, dug the, yeah. I dug the footings for that workshop, and <laughs> there's no way I'm digging all the way down. <laughs> no way. <laughs> no, but there is, a, there is quite a lot of... Uh, building you could expand upwards i suppose the house would look ridiculous then <laughs> a nice little loft yeah <laughs> why not well, the the outside building so michelle's cakery the utility room the downstairs loom my office my workshop and the workshop um storage area uh all single story and it's not that far off the footprint of the whole house <laughs> <laughs> so we could you know you could do that again upwards. <laughs> that would be a massive area. It was a real popular TV show in Norway here a few years ago. It's a, it's a maker, and he was at the Skåper Festival the last year. I remember seeing him there, and he and his wife bought an old uh, derelict farm on the west coast of Norway, and they started like rebuilding it uh, using old techniques and whatnot. But he also did add all these crazy ideas and whatnot. And the theme of the entire series was that he has, of course, promised his wife a new kitchen once they got the building mass up to a certain certain standard. And and he just completely sidetracked all the time. All right, I, I need to build a well and then I need to build like a spinning wheel for the, the river. And yeah, I should have this uh, small extension on the top of the roof of the barn so I can sit there and look out over the valley when I do uh, twiddling or, or whatever and she's like yeah but what about my kitchen yeah 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 your kitchen and <laughs> I think it was a year or two ago <laughs> my wife like yeah they're divorced now <laughs> <So> <laughs> I mean we, we remember I remember we just saw a couple of episodes when we visited my mother's cabin it's like I wonder how long that will last and it turns out not very <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you need to be careful as a maker if you uh, if you make it take over your life it, it might take your life both <laughs> literally and physically helps being married to another maker <laughs> yeah uh, that helps i can't see that yeah yeah <laughs> so we've got a guest coming on next week we do should we tell people who that is now or should we save it for the half pint you decide. Let's save it for the half pint. Yeah, save it for the <laughs> half pint. <laughs> yeah, a, a hint to who it is uh, is a kind of segue that uh, we should mention that the Bad Audio Podcast is back. Oh yeah. From the grave? No, from the from the hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> it was. The... To be honest, it had one foot in the grave, but yeah, it's a yeah. It went a, up to a farm, but it came back. Yeah, saved by the bell. <laughs> the shelter called. We got an open spot. <laughs> I kind of blame you for that, KJ. Actually, you. Not that I'm sad about it, but you you did the outro to the last episode of Bad Audio, and um, you you said it. There's a possibility it could come back. <laughs> you left it open. You didn't kill it once and for all. <laughs> no, but I didn't want it to die. Oh, there you go. It was nice to have it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice to have it, to look at your phone and have 
67 <laughs> unheard messages. Do you know what's really nice is, you know, when it's your your turn to edit number one crude mistakes and you've got to do the bad audio that week as well. And you're trying <laughs> to get a video out. That is really great. <laughs> so great. <laughs> it's a lot of hours in the, yeah. in the office for you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, l luckily then, the number one crude mistakes podcast is an easy edit, so yeah. I mean, yeah. that's basically just slapping the intro music at the uh, at the beginning and call it a day and just pick a random spot. Yep, this is the half pint. <laughs> <laughs> more or less, more or less. We've, we've gotten better. I mean, the, the early epi episodes, that was a lot of editing and yeah. cutting and pasting and getting everything to work. But when we find... A rhythm and formula then yeah it's been smooth sailing as long as the technology has been with us that is it's it's the edits are good once um the intros have been sorted out like last week recording the intro at the end and cocking that up and what i'm really slow <laughs> editing the intro <laughs> for that for last week's episode i've got to admit but, but that that being said though i think it might not be consciously but Sometimes I feel that we we actually start the banter in the beginning because we know that this is going to be a nice segue into then saying welcome and then some. So sometimes you haven't needed to do any cutting. Yeah. Yeah. Not on my episodes. No. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's just me not caring. Like, yeah. ah, this will work. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's on you as well because you do say, "Oh, it's a decent edit. Let's just keep it and get it over with." And like, okay. I just always say it's a decent edit because I don't want anybody to say anything different to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. <laughs> I don't have feelings. <laughs> yeah, I have opinions. Uh, well, I, I, oh, that's, that's just reminded me. Got a bone to pick with you when we get to the half pint, Hobart. Oh, with me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks like you were pointing at me. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let, let's keep this episode going then. Um, <laughs> what should we no, talk about? No, I think about? it's time to end this episode and go yeah. to the half All pint. Right. <laughs> What's Thank you very mean? much for listening and me hopefully watching. Who knows? Yeah. yeah who knows? Um, we'll see, and may, maybe we'll see you again soon. I mean, uh, Scarpet Festival and is. Uh, getting closer by the day as well. Yes, mm, it is. Yeah. Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> Bye! All right, Bye. good night! Good night! <laughs>